The versatile Nell Fortner excelled as a basketball player, coach, and now as a television analyst. An All-State basketball player at New Braunfels High School, she quickly caught the attention of the University of Texas, where she played both basketball and volleyball. A member of the 1981 Lady Longhorn National Championship volleyball team, she also scored 1,466 points in basketball while playing on teams that had a 127 and 26 record. After coaching stops at Stephen F. Austin, Louisiana Tech, and Purdue, she was picked to guide the USA women's basketball team and led the squad to gold medals at the 1998 World Championships and the 2000 Sydney Olympics. After the Olympics, Fortner was awarded USA Basketball Coach of the Year in 2000. Her USA Basketball coaching record of 101 wins, 14 losses, is the most wins of any coach in USA women's basketball history. She easily transitioned into the role of studio analyst for women's college basketball and volleyball on the SEC Network and ESPN. Nell Fortner adds to her impressive collection of honors, now as a member of the Texas Sports Hall of Fame. Ladies and gentlemen, Hall of Famer Nell Fortner. Wow, this is a big ring, y'all, if you haven't seen them. Thank you very much to the Texas Sports Hall of Fame Committee for this, this honor. It's very, um, I'm very humbled by it, and it's, I'm very grateful for it. Um, thank you. And congratulations to everyone else that's up, up here on the stage tonight um, to, to be around these prestigious individuals, athletes and coaches, and to have an opportunity to talk to everybody um, over the last couple of hours has, has been really a lot of fun. So congratulations to all of y'all. Um, I've got to say this, Pete Fredenberg, I've known him since I was in the 10th grade, y'all. New Braunfels High School, he was a football coach. I know you're getting inducted into the Hall of Fame, but the real Hall of Famer in your family is your wife, Karen Fredenberg. So, um, where are you at, Karen? Because, okay, there you, Karen Fredenberg, when I moved to Texas in the 10th grade, this was my very first coach ever in my life. She taught me how to play volleyball. She was a tremendous role model. She set me on a path to wanting to be a coach along with Karen Chisholm, who is here tonight also, still coaches volleyball at Texas State. So to have those role models in my life at such an early age, I appreciate it. You never could guard me on the basketball court. He would come to practice. His wife would get him to come because there was nobody who could guard me, um, only because they didn't know how to play basketball. I was the only one who knew how to play. So I'm so glad I could probably still beat you today. All right, we got that settled. <laughs> I want to say thanks to my family that made it over here from Mississippi today, and they got on a private plane. Thank you to my brother-in-law, Bill Sanderson, for that. My mother is in her 90s, and, and she needed to fly that way, and I love y'all for being here. So thank you, thank you, thank you for that. My parents, my family was the first team I was ever a part of, and a, a very tough team, four siblings, and it was about being competitive and surviving and advancing when you're the littlest one of the bunch. But um, it was a, a great upbringing there, and I, I love y'all dearly. have a lot of friends here tonight also, so thank you for making the effort for being here. I appreciate that. You know, being a coach, you never dream of, being, of accepting a Hall of Fame award. I know I never have. You dream of wins. You dream of getting the next best recruit out there. You want to build the best team you have, but you never stand here. Uh, it becomes very obvious that you don't stand here because of what you accomplished. It's because of what everybody around you has helped you accomplish and the athletes have performed at their highest level. And I was fortunate to be around some fantastic coaches, from Karen and Karen at New Braunfels High School to Gary Blair, who's at A&M right now, who gave me my start in college coaching, to Leon Barmore at Louisiana Tech. And then comes along the best of the best, Jody Conrad at the University of Texas. I mean, are you kidding me? How could I not be successful at some point in my coaching career? So I've been very, very fortunate. And, and obviously, when I got to Texas, the very first moment I met Jody Conrad, I knew I wanted to play for her. I knew I wanted to be like her. 
And um, thank you, Jody, for everything you've meant to me in my career. I appreciate it. And thank you for being here tonight. I have a dear friend that's here tonight. You know, we have moments in our life that um, kind of speak to us. And I I've always had big goals as a coach. And you have to have a lot of help to do that. And then you have to have people that kind of put you in your place. But I have a dear friend here tonight, Mickey DeMoss, coached with Pat Summit for 20 years. They won a few championships, the Lady Vols. I don't know. You might have heard of them. Um, but we were, I met her years ago, and it was in the early 90s. And we were vacationing, eating breakfast, and she asked me. I was just an assistant coach at that time, never been a head coach. She goes, Nell, what do you want to, what do you want to be? Like, what's your goal? I said, well, I want to be the Olympic coach. And she starts coughing on, choking on her bacon. <laughs> I'm like, no, really, I do. She goes, now, you cannot be the Olympic coach. And I said, well, well, why not? She goes, well, because you've got to be a head coach. You've got to do this. You've got to do that. You've got to. I said, well, okay, well, I'll, I'll do that. She goes, no. I said, look, Mickey, somebody has to be the Olympic coach. Why not me? And lo and behold, four years later, I get a call from Tara Vanderveer. She asked me. Now, would you like to come be my assistant coach to train the team for the Olympics in 96? Would you like to work with the best players, play against the best competition, travel all around the world, and then play, try to win a gold medal? Well, my gosh. <laughs> oh, let me think about that for a minute. Mm. I said yes, and, and the rest was history. I don't know how I could ever thank USA Basketball enough for that extraordinary opportunity because it catapulted me into international basketball and four years after the 96 Olympics, I'm coaching the 2000 Olympic team. And you talk about an everyday tutorial of becoming a better coach because of all the coaches you were able to work with at that level and all of the fantastic athletes you're able to coach at that level. I knew I could be the, I knew I could do the Olympic job. You know, there were lots of moments come to you and you realize you're, you're, you're capable of doing it. But I've, I'm going to share this one story with you because at this moment it really hit home that, yes, I can travel the world and do this. We were in Ekaterinburg, Russia with that 96 Olympic team, and I was an assistant coach. And we had beaten the Russian team three times that week. This is in January in Siberia. So it was cold. But they had a party for us one night and after at the end of it. And so we go to this museum. It's a really nice place. And we all walk in. We don't speak Russian. They don't speak English. All the dignitaries are there sitting up at a table just like this, about eight guys. We go marching in. There's a symphony band ready to play for us to have, you know, dance and whatever. And they look at us as we go by shaking the hands. There's like 10 bottles of vodka on the table. And we walk by, and all the guys, the, these men, the governor, the mayors, the, you know, they're like, vodka. And we go, oh, no, 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 no. We don't, no, no vodka. So they're like very, very disappointed. We walk by, and we all leave that room. Those guys sit down, and the party's kind of, oh, nothing's going on really. Well, I'm like, let me go back in there and see those guys. <laughs> so I walk back around the corner, and I stand in front of those eight guys, and they look at me like, what? And I look at them, and I go, vodka. And they stand up, and they go, vodka. <laughs> And they stand up and they start popping those tops and filling those shot glasses. And I take a couple of shots. I've never done that before in my life. And they burn going down. And the other assistant coach comes around the corner and she looks at me and she goes, Nell, what are you doing? And I looked at her and I said, Renee, just make sure I get on the bus. I'm doing it for the USA. And the party got going, and it was a heck of a fun night. But I knew at that time, it was just one of those moments that hit me because when you coach in the international level and you travel the world, you've got to be able to get along with people, communicate with people, and get through those um, sometimes uh, tough situations. But that was a good one. And those people found me in, the, at, in Atlanta at the 96 Olympics, and it was really fun reconnecting with them. But I, that was an extraordinary opportunity. I was very fortunate for that. You know, again, we don't get here, coaches don't get here because of, of things that we do that are great. It's because of things that people around us do are great. And I'm so appreciative of all the people that I've been around that were great and taught me and helped me. 
When I stepped away from coaching and ESPN came calling, I, I so appreciated that opportunity. I absolutely love it. And I'm telling you, I have had more men walk up to me tonight and say, Now, what a great women's Final Four we just saw. Was that not awesome? I mean, it was the best ever. And I say thank you to Pat Lowry, who runs women's college basketball for ESPN, for the opportunity, Pat. I will forever be appreciative, and I look forward to next year. But it was just a, a fantastic year, and I know our sport is growing when I have more men coming up to me talking about how great women's basketball is right now than women. So, guys, everybody who didn't watch, y'all need to turn your TV on next year and start watching women's basketball because it's pretty good out there. And I'll leave you with this. Um, I was fortunate to just be the driver of a bus that had the right people sitting in the right seat doing the best that they could do. And that was, uh, I think that's what coaching is all about. You're driving the bus, but you have to have everybody in the right places on the bus. And I've been fortunate to have a career like that. Congratulations to everybody here. Thank you all very much. I'm very honored. Thank you.